G'day Blenderheads and Pokemaniacs! In the previous video, I walked you through sculpting a realistic Charmeleon using Blender. If you missed that video, firstly, shame on you, but you can catch up here. In this video, I'm going to be texturing Charmeleon in Substance Painter. To start with, we'll need to create a proper UV map. In this example, I'm using the Live UV Unwrap found under Tools options in the right-hand panel. This means that when I mark my UV seams, Blender will update my UVs in real time. It's a really fast way to work. I know for this dude I'm going to want some extreme detail, so I'm going to be using a UDIM workflow. UDIM is just a fancy way of having multiple textures on the same object. So I can have one 4K texture for the head, another 4K texture for each arm, and so on. The aim of any good UV set is to have as few cuts as possible while having as little stretching in the UVs as possible. You can view this stretching by going to Overlays, Display Stretch. Dark blue means that there's minimal stretching, which is great. The lighter the blue, or worse if it starts to turn yellow, the more stretching, indicating that you may need to add more cuts. Once I have my UVs cut up, I can set up my UDIM tiles so that I can spread out my UV islands more. It's important to make sure that your UV tiles are evenly sized. You can quickly test this by adding a checkered texture to your material. If the checkers are roughly the same size, you've done a good job. But as you can see, Charmeleon's nose here is quite bulbous, meaning that the UVs are far too stretched. To compensate for this, I cut out the interior of the mouth and add an additional slit down the front of the face. This reduces the stretching and makes my checkers look much more evenly spread. UDIMs don't have to just be for one object. I have Charmeleon's main body on the first five tiles, but then I add the claws, teeth, and tongue onto the final two layers. Don't forget that if your claws are all the same duplicated object, you can copy the UVs from one to another using the Control L menu. This can save a stack of time, particularly if you have a lot of teeth. Just remember to space out the UVs so that you can make them all look unique with a slightly different texture. Before baking out my displacement, I do one final look over to see if I can straighten out any of the UVs just a little bit more.
Substance Painter has very quickly become one of my favourite programs, but one thing it lacks is the ability to bake out a displacement map from your high polygon sculpt to an animation friendly low poly mesh. So to do that, we'll need to use Blender. Blender's displacement baking is really good, but it still lacks a UDIM workflow, and although Blender supports UDIMs, it's not so great at creating them. But don't worry, we have an add-on that can help you. The add-on is called UDIM Baker, and it can be found on Blender Market. I'll put a link in the description. At the bottom of the page, you'll find a link to the Gumroad page where you can download the add-on for free, but it is only $5, so if you're able to support the developer, that'd be great. To bake out a displacement map, there's a few steps you need to go through. Firstly, you need to create a new texture to save the map into. In my case, I'm going to be using a 4K map. Make sure that you select 32-bit float and tiled when you create it. We'll then create our UDIM tiles. In my case, I need another 7, making for a total of 8. You can always add or subtract more tiles later. I ran into a rather annoying issue here, and thankfully, one of the developers was able to help me out. Under Preferences and System, you'll find an option called Memory Cache Limit. By default, this should be set to 496, but for some reason, mine was only set to 1024. Creating these large UDIM tiles can use quite a bit of memory, and if you don't have enough, Blender will start removing tiles to make room for the new ones. With 1024, I was only able to create 3 UDIM tiles, but once I set it back to the regular 496, I could make 15 tiles. So if you're having trouble making the number of tiles you need, try setting this number higher. For our new add-on to work, we first need to save these UDIM textures, otherwise it's going to throw an error. Displacement maps need to be saved out at a much higher bitrate than normal maps, so you can't just use a JPEG here or your displacement map will lack a lot of detail. There's a few formats that you can use, but personally I use OpenEXR. You're welcome to choose either half or full float, half will just have half the level of detail. And finally for the codec I recommend using the DWAA Lossy. Although this will compress your image slightly, I found it still has tons of detail in it and it will create much smaller files for you. Make sure that your multi-res modifier is turned on with the viewport level set to zero. Sometimes I do like to set it to one as it smooths out the displacement a little and can prevent some glitches. Set your baking options to bake from multi-res and bake type to displacement. You can also bake normal maps this way, but I'll be using substance for that. Make sure that you have both your model and the texture map selected and now you can hit bake to UDM tiles. Now of course you're going to want to test your displacement map to make sure that it's working nicely. So in the material editor, add a displacement node and plug it into the displacement slot on your material. For it to render correctly, you'll need to remember to turn on displacement and bump in the material settings, as well as turning on experimental in your render settings. Then you can add a subdivision modifier, turn on adaptive subdivision, and you should be good to go. If your model explodes into some sort of Gumby and pokey mess, check the scale of your displacement node. It usually only needs to be set to around 0.1. Also make sure that the model itself has its scale attributes applied. Displacement takes into account the size of your model, so if your values are off, your map can look weird too. With the displacement maps created and saved, I export both a low poly version of Charmeleon and a high poly version with the multi-res modifiers applied at the higher subdivision level. Charmeleon has a whopping 32 million polygons, so brace yourself, that export is going to take a little while. Over in Substance, I create a new scene with the low poly version as my object, a 4K texture resolution, and make sure to turn on the UDIM workflow. The first thing to do is bake out a bunch of Substance maps, so I go to the Bake Mesh Maps, select my high polygon mesh, and make sure that the maps are getting baked at 4K, and then bake everything using the default settings. Again, this is going to be a long process, so grab a cup of coffee or hug a cat. But through the magic of video editing, we'll skip this wait time. I now have an awesome low poly version of Charmeleon with all of those sexy details from the high poly sculpt. Don't forget to remove the high poly mesh from your bake mesh options. I found that this can massively inflate your file sizes. Speaking of which, save your scene. You really don't want to go through that baking process more than once. One of the hardest things in art is having a blank canvas, so I like to slap on some smart materials to get the ball rolling. I'll often delete and replace a lot of these layers, but it's so much nicer to have something to start with. I've done a bit of experimenting before, so I know I'd like to start with this blue alien skin as well as the human skin to mix in between. I'll also add the creature teeth to get me started with the claws and teeth. I'll need to mask these materials and I've realised that I didn't bake my ID maps correctly. The ID map gives each mesh its own separate colour, allowing me to create colour specific masks. So I go back to my bake mesh maps, and this time I make sure that they're getting baked by mesh ID. 
Fortunately, I can just bake the ID maps without all the others, so this is really quick. Lo and behold, Substance also has a Creature Tongue smart material. This will also save me quite a bit of time. The first thing I need to do is correct this horrible blue colour and make him red again. After that, I spend a bit of time going through all the various skin layers that came with the smart materials, figuring out which ones I want to keep, tweak, or just remove. The next step is to start building some major colour variations. I create a fill layer and add a black mask so that I can paint the colour back in where I want it. I start by adding his white chest and underbelly. I also add some of this yellowish colour to areas where the bone is closer to the skin, such as the fingers, toes and the crest on his head. Next I create a separate layer to darken the interior of the mouth, also adding some of this colour to the lips and the gums. The Teeth Smart Material is just a great material to start with. It adds a base colour along with plaque, gunk and dirt which gets you 90% of the way there. In this instance I need to create separate materials for the teeth and the claws just to make sure that my masks work a little bit easier. But this is such a fast way to get these small details done really quickly. The tongue material too is extremely accurate straight out of the box. The colours need a slight tweak and the veins are far too large, but broadly speaking this too just works.
I create another fill layer, this time using a dark purplish tone. I add this dark colour to areas of thick scales such as the spine and the armour on the arms and legs. One thing I realised while working on this project is that using a bunch of 4K textures really slows Substance down. I'd recommend switching to 2K while you're working on your materials and upping it to 4K just before you bake them out. It's actually breathtaking how much faster 2K is. This takes care of the major colour variations, now it's time to add variation within those colours. For this I create a mask builder and fiddle with the settings so that I can extract the gaps between the scales and make them darker. This both simulates tiny bits of dirt and gunk that would accumulate there and helps mimic ambient occlusion. I create one for the red parts of the body and another for the chest and underbelly, this way I can control their colours individually. Then of course, I do the opposite. Using basically the same mask, but inverted, I extract the tops of the scales so that I can make them slightly lighter. These are the areas that would be facing the elements more, such as the sun, the wind, and anything else in the environment. This wear and tear would slowly erode these areas, giving them a slightly different shade. Thank you. 
What's great about having all these layers set up with the appropriate masks is that you can come back at any time and tweak the colors slightly. This not only gives you the freedom to change things much later in the project, it could also be used to create different variations of the character with subtle color changes quickly. This blank eye is starting to look weird compared to the highly detailed body. Although I'm not going to bother texturing it properly in substance, I do add the pupil colour so that it doesn't stand out quite so badly. The base textures are looking really good now, so it's time to start adding some of the extra details. To start with, I want a layer of dirt on him. These details are the parts that tell the story behind your character. In this case, Charmeleon here, his backstory is that he's been travelling with his trainer for many weeks, camping out under the stars. Although he's not a wild Pokemon, camping outdoors for such a long time would naturally build up a lot of grit and grime. He's rather in need of a bath. One detail that I really wanted to add that's different from the cartoons was the idea of a charred tail, where I'll eventually add a fire simulation. I wanted to go with the idea of a really thick leathery hide, so although it will char and burn, it wouldn't actually hurt the Pokemon. To achieve this, I grab a lava material that I got from CG Bookcase and import it into Substance. I really wanted this to have some glow, which I've never done in Substance before. It does take a little bit to figure out how to turn it on, but I think this subtle detail is really nice. I suddenly realise I haven't masked my dirt layer properly and poor Charmeleon has quite a lot of dirt in his mouth. Don't forget that you can jump into the 2D UV window to make it easier to paint out some of these hard to reach places. To finish up, I'll add some extra variation and small details. Firstly, I don't feel like his scales are quite rough enough. I really wanted a dry, rough texture. 
So I add a couple of random noise textures to increase both the roughness and add some extra noise to the normal map. Both of these help break up the lighting a little bit more, diffusing the texture. I also decide to add some scratches and scars. Although this Charmeleon is relatively young, he's still been in his fair share of Pokemon battles. He should have a handful of battle scars to remember his victories. To help emphasize the scars, I create another layer underneath his skin, kind of a fleshy tone, although I do make it a little bit brighter later, as I want these to look like old scars, not fresh wounds. To finish up, I test Charmeleon in a few different lighting environments to make sure that I'm happy with how rough or shiny different parts of him are. Both teeth and claws tend to have a slightly different shade as they get closer to the skin, so as a final touch of detail I add this darkening to both of them. <laughs> 